What is poppin' people? Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Elixir, and today we're going to be going into a little bit of a different Mother D Reaper deck. We've obviously seen that Otakon was won by a Mother D Reaper yellow package, uh, but I'm going to bring you something pretty different. I haven't seen any deck list like it with the Mother D package. We're going to be going for a red build. It was partially born out of necessity from not hitting all the pieces that I needed in the boxes that we were looking at, and also not really wanting to spend too much, so I was making use of some red package that we got from BT8. So without further ado, we're going to get into the deck list. So to start things off, Poor Mother D Reaper, kind of standard, they're currently in different sleeves. This deck is built insanely cheap. To the point that even the eggs aren't sleeved up in the same package. I'll probably fix that eventually, but they are all the same card. You really only need two. Very few matchups where you're going to need more than uh, the two. One, really, ideally, if things go well. And in terms of Reapers as well, we're playing the three of the regular Reaper. Obviously, this is your win condition. Come in for three with seven underneath the Mother Reaper and it gains rush and just continues to swing. Running three of them because it just makes it a little bit easier to actually pick them. Four is definitely too slow and too clunky because really you're only looking for one Reaper and if the others hit in security they hit in security and we take those. Otherwise two Reapers is dead in hand. Didn't really want to go more than three. Then as I said before a little bit of necessity uh, comes out here. We are running Five searches, ten searches, fourteen searches. So definitely on the lower end, most people would choose to run. I've seen the lowest that I've seen outside of this list is eighteen, which is a perfectly fine count. If you're looking for consistency, you're definitely looking at eighteen. But uh, this one, originally I was running twelve, but then we managed to find two extra reapers, uh, two extra searches in a different box. 12 was just way too inconsistent. This deck sometimes still has the problem if you get too many searches in your security, then obviously you just don't, you don't have the sort of like draw power that you're looking for or like security power. You don't have like the pieces that you need and it does make the deck a little bit fragile, but this deck is a reckless red deck and it's been picking up some pretty consistent wins after a couple of the speed bumps have been done and a couple of new pieces were added in. Um, things have gotten a lot more consistent. I'll actually show at the very end what the original list had, the three extra cards that have since been switched out and kind of the ideas behind them. But onto the more standard things, four pendulum feet, pendulum feet, searching a searcher and a D Reaper can sometimes just get you two searches, which if you're struggling, you're starting to dry up on the searches that you have in hand. If you're not getting them every turn, sometimes going for two of those is incredibly useful. Or it can help you find your other pieces, which can keep you in the game. Very, very useful card. Um, I'll also go into a little bit of the play style at the end of this. Mostly Mother D Reaper kind of just sits there and just heals up. Since you're not really doing healing in this game, your aggression is on a much different tempo to how you would normally play a Mother D Reaper deck. You're kind of looking to try and build up to around about three before you start swinging. Um, unless obviously you're playing into red or something that has the ability to get rid of your small pieces, in which case you'll keep the tempo high and you'll just start swinging. Obviously the cards that have on play effects like, um, Pendulum Feet have outlived their actual usefulness on the field. So they are free to swing if need be. If you are worried about them getting cleared, you might as well hit in, uh, whilst you can. Another standard piece, we're running four Gatekeepers. Gatekeeper, also one of the main win conditions outside of Reaper, because sometimes you just can't find it. If you can at least get up to six, ADR Gatekeeper becomes fantastic. Even if you are hard playing, if you have two of them down, um, you can really shut down decks. In fact, this deck, in addition to just having your standard like Reaper rush or just swinging over things, Gatekeeper has allowed me to deck out two people and now I take selfies with all of my uh, deck out victims uh, which I'll throw in at the end of the video or here in editing uh, and if you like this deck list and you think the decking people out with Mother D Reaper is pretty funny uh, make sure to just tweet at me uh, see Twitter down below tweet at me use the hashtag Mother D deck out or something like that um, yeah because I want to see if people are decking people out with the uh, gatekeeper stall you know make me chuckle Four bubbles, 
Bubble's incredibly useful if you do draw into a bunch of searches or if you've decided to turbo for a draw because you're looking for a different piece. The bubble's very useful in order to get that extra searcher in. Say if you're on five and you're kind of feeling the heat and you need your gatekeeper to actually come online. Maybe you've hit it early in security and it's kind of just sitting there, not really doing anything. The bubble's going to help you get up to six. Really, really useful card. Obviously, if you search it with pendulum feet, it's usually your prime target. Besides maybe Jerry. Uh, but before we go into Jerry, we're running three Palatis Head. Um, this deck doesn't actually run any regular Digimon. It is all um, ADR cards. I know that the most recent list, uh, the top Oticon, had the Starmons. But this is just running Palatis Head as your means of removal. It can be a little bit slow uh, to get it down. But once you're getting to the turns where you're around about five, because this deck sometimes gets stuck around five, once you get around five, it's coming down for one cost, immediately delete something. Or you can just use it to choke since it's six cost. It's enough that once you've got two or three searches underneath, you can start really using it to memory choke. And also if you're using it to keep turn, then you get to pop something without necessarily having to attack and waste. Uh, it doesn't have rush, but you don't need it to have rush if it's just deleting uh, something that's there and people can't keep their weaker units, their blockers um, standing to avoid getting swung over. You can just delete them for free. It's very, very nice. But... For Jerry, Jerry, usually your main search target, uh, especially if you know that you're not getting a lot of your searches in hand, then Jerry, just to turbo things through, often she gets swung over straight away and she is usually, especially if someone's not their first time playing against Mother D, she gets swung over every time. She's your prime target for deletion. So really, you can't use her early game. You need to be bringing her in in order to use her effect straight away. Most of the time she doesn't last for more than that turn. And even then when you do rest her, she does get swung over, which is why sometimes if you're playing a little bit more cautious or if you have more time to set up or just get the pieces in hand, I run two of the ADR5 creep hands as our blocker just to keep um, your Jerry alive because obviously you can draw that one hit. Obviously if they commit to swinging on her then and they've got a wide enough board, they can commit to swinging on her. And, you know, it'd be like that. But hopefully you'll have cards like Pendulum Feet that are just standing. And they'll be there to swing in retaliation if your uh, mother is big enough. But just running two Creep Pans, don't need any more than that. Um, I wouldn't actually cut this down to one. I'm probably going to keep this even if I do upgrade the number of searches and stuff to make it a little bit more of a standard deck. I think keeping Creep Pans to keep your Jerry up is a nice tech that not everyone's ready for. Uh, especially since blockers aren't always in the meta. And also if you do choose to turbo onto a searcher and you don't draw into your bubbles or anything like that to put it under, uh, outside of just target removal, having the creep hands to keep a searcher in play is sometimes nice if you've used it to swing over a Digimon. We're going to run the one of Optimizer. This one was one of the cards that escaped the cutting room when I was starting to find more pieces to cut out all of the filth, like uh, Horn Striker and all that. Um, this was at four just because I was building the deck, but it's come down to one and I've kind of liked it the times it's shown up. It's obviously quite pricey and really doesn't come online until you hit five. Once you do hit five though, you can pass the turn for two in order to get an additional... Um, uh, additional reaper down sometimes it lets you top deck into your bubbles which means if you have a searcher on the field and you know maybe you didn't have the bubbles that's a searcher that's under the mother reaper for what would i guess be five cost if you're reducing it unfortunately can't search the gatekeeper because it's 11 but every other piece in this deck besides reaper uh can be put in and the fact that it has been eroded to have the cards get put back to the top of your deck means that you at least know what cards you're drawing into. Put a searcher on the top of your deck to guarantee that you're at least drawing the next turn. Very, very useful card. Definitely don't need to run more than one. Um, and most decks don't even run one at all. We have four of the hero. This mostly was just to get the red package online. Uh, and now thankfully have four of these. Initially I did not, and we were actually running one to Kuya just simply because he was a red tamer. He was three drop, which was slightly less expensive but obviously didn't fix the getting choked which is a problem in this deck so you want a memory tamer of some sort just to be able to play um hero doesn't give you any extra benefits none of the red tamers would at all hero is just the one that i had available nice and cheap he came in bta and you know not many decks use him so he's very very cheap to find online so if you're trying to build this deck cheap 
which Mother D Reaper is obviously very well known for, being the cheap deck that kind of anyone can play with very little investment. The search is usually the most expensive part, alongside maybe Mother and Reaper. Uh, this one allows you to play like below what most people consider the minimum, but it probably is the new minimum. Um, cheap red tamer rather than the yellows. Sure, you don't get anything out of it, but at least you're getting your memory set down. And then you can start playing your option cards. Uh, we run two of the EX2 Fireball. Very good card, uh, just allows you to delete uh, Digimon with 3000 DP, or more importantly, draw two, which is what everyone's really using it for. Kind of annoying if you do actually have to delete something with it, which is why sometimes you use a Palatine's Head to clear the board first, and then you just come down with Fireball. Obviously can't reduce the cost, but for a two cost draw two, it can be the sort of turbo that you need to really start milling through your deck if need be. For removal, we're running three Crimson Blaze. This was at four, I think, before, but now it has been cut down. Obviously very, very useful for just hitting board clear if you need it, um, and stopping people from splashing out extra cards. Say you're playing into Imperial and they're going for their turbo thing, you can't, they can't bring out anything extra, which keeps the board a little bit thinner, and obviously just hitting the board for it being equally wide if they're trying to match you on how wide your board goes. Very, very useful card. Unfortunately, though, if you are playing into the black matchup, a lot of the cards end up, the blockers end up at 7k, thanks to Hopmon or Tyne, depending on which turn it is, which can make Crimson Blaze whiff in security or on your turn. So that has actually been cut down from four as the main removal to three, because it's still pretty applicable in most matchups. And instead, we run two Gaia Force now, which just non discrimination just full just delete a digimon if you have a pesky blocker that's at 6k that's just been a nuisance to get rid of gaia force doesn't have that threshold and it will just delete a digimon you're ideally not playing this one from hand but the way i play sometimes i end up dropping 11 so dropping 8 doesn't really feel that bad um especially if it's getting rid of a problem digimon and specifically for the black matchup stopping chaos mon from coming out and just deleting the biggest stack is what keeps you in the game because really i'd say this deck's worst matchup is probably black because a lot of the cards can go over 6k to dodge crimson blaze and um black or Greymon as well as chaos mon both have the ability to swing over unsuspended targets which uh obviously is a huge problem if you're swinging over mother d reaper so yeah uh having the gaia force as a means of removal is definitely your best shot at staying in the game. Other options that have been run in this, I said the Takuya before, but really, you're never really wanting to run the Takuya. If you could find like a two drop red tamer, sure. Um, we're tested offensive plug in A, just to put a little bit of pressure on with like a pendulum feet or something like that. Just people really aren't expecting you to run it. Obviously, all the options in your deck require you to have a tamer out. So the ignoring the color requirements doesn't really matter for this. You're running a red package. The extra security attack is nice for just running through things and dropping it on your Reaper. So that way it's just really clicking through things without you necessarily having to go to eight or nine searches under the Mother D. Uh, it can be really, really helpful if you're just trying to speed things up or if you're playing against something that has more than five security. But more really, it was for if it's in security, revealing the top three cards to look for a tamer. If you're struggling to find that tamer, Sometimes the search power of the offensive plugin in security uh, was coming up, but it's not consistent enough that I would recommend it over the removal. Since you're not recovering, your main game is removal. Uh, and that's what this deck definitely does a very, very good job of. If you get early gatekeeper, you're just revenge killing. If you can get up to around about four, most of your, uh, your three drops are revenge killing. And the blocker is really, really nice uh, in this deck for keeping Jerry alive for one turn. Or uh, at least forcing them to commit removal cards to them, which then can keep your other pieces safe and ready. So yeah, this is my uh, Reckless Red uh, Mother D Reaper list. It has been pretty consistent in the matchups I've been playing locally. I haven't taken it to any big events or anything like that. So it is a very like rudimentary like scuffed deck but it's actually been really a lot of fun to play and 
I'd like to see more people giving uh, the different colors of Mother D Reaper a try rather than just uh, the yellow and black. But uh, yeah, that's going to be all from me. Let me know what you guys think of the deck in the video. If you think there's any other red cards you think would actually really work in this kind of package. And uh, let me know if it changed your mind and if you think that 18 is the minimum number of searches that you should run in a deck. But uh, until next time, see ya.